which is 702.co.za. Eight minutes to five, it's that time of the week. On a Thursday, we do it every week where we talk about property. Today, we're going to focus on the township property market, both residential uh, and commercial. And to do this, we're joined now by Tim Akinusi, who is the CEO and co-founder of Mortgage Market. Mr. Akinusi, welcome and thanks very much for your time. Yeah, thanks for having me, John. So tell us, first of all, I mean, the, the, the property market in townships, is it mainly residential or is there... Uh, a decent business, a decent flow of trade in commercial properties, for example, shops and so on? I think uh, to answer that, right, I think the commercial side has always been there, right? Because people need, you know, goods and services. So, you know, it's easy to get a mall up. There are a couple of malls, you know, that exist in major townships already. So that is uh, almost a, a given, you know, because yes. of the number of people that stay there. But what isn't uh, a given is, uh, you know, the housing situation, which is on the, re uh, the, the real estate side, right? Um, that often has lagged behind. And um, I think uh, the reality is that these townships are there. They're not going anywhere. And if people are going to trade there, then uh, they might as well live well there. So, so what's happening in the market there? Is there a move uh, in, in, a, in a positive direction? Is it fairly stagnant? So, John, you know, the thing about township property is that, um, well, let me start here. The thing about property in general, right, it has to have three key characteristics for it to be regarded as um, sort of moving forward and, and modern, right? It's right. got to be property that has utility value, mm -hmm. right? So shelter, uh, you know, use of it uh, as a business place or leisure. The second part of that, it's got to be saleable. So you've got to be in a position to sell it or um, leverage it with debt. And the third part of that is it's got to appreciate in value. With township property, it only takes the first box, which is yeah. about shelter. The other two aspects of it isn't there. So in order for us to modernize it, right, we've got to think about it in the context of you've got to build housing that is within an economic hub, not uh, you know uh, units that are 30 k's away that people need to travel long distance to get to. Right. And you've also got to make sure that it has a sense of design style that uh, you know, um, a bank would want to put a bond over it um, to allow you to, um, to sell it. What about the institutional and regulatory framework? I mean, is the deeds office um, up to speed with everybody who actually owns a house in a, in a township? If transactions are to take place, people would want to know that that kind of stuff is not gonna lead to delays. How, how would you assess the state of governments performing their <laughs> obligations in that space? That's a very difficult question to answer. I think yes. um, the deeds office has an obligation to register properties uh, correctly the right way as it would any other part of the country. So we expect that the same would go for township property, um, especially property that is gonna be bonded, right? Because you're expecting that a bank is going to give you, uh, say on average 800,000 to a million rand to buy a place in the township, they want to make sure that the place has been properly uh, registered with the NHPRC, that it's got all its uh, rights in there, and uh, once it's registered at the deeds office, um, it, it would stay there and it would have a, you know, an address that uh, the next owner could um, could lay claim to when they make uh, a uh, a transfer of it. Where, where are the buyers coming from? Do do people tend to buy in areas that they know where they're already living? Or do people, if they're moving, for example, for work, uh, let's say from Ikuruleni to Mukhale City, maybe that's an extreme <laughs> example, but perhaps to Johannesburg, um, are, are, are people buying in areas where, where they have no family roots, for example? You know, that's unfortunately the history that we have is that people are forced to live, leave where they grew up yes. to find housing that takes those three boxes that I spoke about earlier, right? because they, obviously their economic um, situation has improved significantly and um, they tend to move in that direction. But it doesn't always have to be the case. And this is why it's such a critical thing that we develop uh, you know, and modernize the, um, the property segment within townships so that people actually can invest in those homes. Um, the, the, the reality is that people from the more developed parts of the country aren't gonna come back into the townships to live there because that's not where they grew up. Yes. They don't know the people in the community. So it really is about the community um, investing in themselves by actually buying property that's uh, 
within townships. If, if there was one change, and there's usually more than one, but if, mm. I, if I could find out what's top of your list, to start uh, creating an opportunity to der derive both individual and community value mm. from what is a massive asset, uh, all of this housing stock, sure. but what's, the, what's the most important thing that needs fixing? I think the most important thing is um, a developer, a property developer, that is going to put people before profits, right? Yes. That is going to put a developmental agenda ahead of uh, simply making profits. So an example of that is um, one developer, um, Urban Dev, that is building a, uh, a significant development out in Soweto called the Land of Towers. They've effectively uh, you know, gotten land uh, in the heart of Soweto that is literally a stone yes. throw away from Barra Mall, uh, one kilometer away from uh, Barra Hospital, and is right next to Maponya Mall. So they are now developing and investing in the community of uh, Soweto by giving um, you know, residents quality uh, housing in a secure estate that has a lot of lifestyle facilities that is not different from any other development in four ways. Right. Right. So you need a developer that has that type of mindset when going into this. And um, yeah, I think once we have more developers of that nature, we'll see a change in that space. Great. We'll keep an eye on that and we'll catch up with you again. Tim Akanusi, CEO and co-founder of Mortgage Market. That was our property feature for this week. Is there something you want us to investigate, discuss, something you want to put on the agenda? Drop me a note on 31702.